Badger fans, let's talk about most exciting defensive recruit in this class, potentially. Uh, any potential flips? Was it a mistake to maybe fill up this class too early? And Keontes Lewis uh, entering the transfer portal. A lot of things to talk about on today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Lockdown Badgers, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Help, help find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college terms and conditions to apply. Uh, and let's get right into it. Not waste any time today. We're going to bring John McNamara on. Um, Badgers content over at Rivals, Badger Den. Uh, John, Badger Blitz, John, thank you so much for jumping on for the second time. And as I mentioned before the show, uh, I'm really excited for it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. So I, I want to start here and talk a little bit about the Badgers uh, coming off that Washington State loss. I have a couple quick, I don't want to call them buy or sell, but I have a couple problem areas that fans have been talking about a lot. I want to throw them your way and just get your perspective on, at the end of the year, are we still looking at these as problems? All right, you ready? All set. All right, pass protection. Do you think by the end of the year it gets cleaned up? And feel free to think that. One. Feel free to say it's an over overblown problem too. You know, it, offensive line in general seems like it's been a problem for for three or four years. So to say it's going to get cleaned up, you know, over the next handful of games, um, yeah, I, I guess I don't feel super confident saying that. It's it's a group that that's underachieved for for a good stretch of time now, and uh, you know, a group that I think that's underachieved under Joe Rudolph and then under Bob Bostead, and now again, it, it's it's two games, but but Jack Bicknell as well. And, you know, you're, you're going into in a, to a new offense and a new scheme and a new way to play on the offensive line. Um, but, it, you know, I don't, I don't know that's going to get a whole lot better right away. Um, I think they can, they can sure some things up and they can make adjustments to provide some more protect, protection, uh, you know, on the edges there. But I don't know. I don't think it's going to be a, a, you know, a thing that they just clean up right away because they, they enter big, play, big 10 play. I think it's going to get harder. What about um, defensive? I don't miscues, misalignments, miscommunications, substitution errors. Where are you at on that one? That one, I think, yeah, because I think you saw a difference from the first half to the second half, just in the Washington State game, in terms of alignments, in terms of uh, you know personnel on the field. So that one does seem like something you can clean up, and it, it seems like something you can clean up in the film room, right, and, and work on that kind of stuff and get more comfortable with with your personnel. So I would say yes on that. Let me ask you this, with the potential transfer of Mac coming from Air Force, obviously that waiver wasn't approved and it kind of got stuck. Do you think the coaching staff maybe saw some of these issues at cornerback? And uh, originally a lot of people thought Mac was just more of a depth piece, but maybe they saw more of an issue at cornerback than we acknowledged. Yeah, I, absolutely. And they they cycled through three guys that were on the current roster and you know they attacked that position. I think that they went out of – spring camp or and said that that's our top position of need you know we, we got to get you know an improvement there and you know that's not to say that you know they don't like alexander smith they don't like ricardo hallman uh you know i think those guys are guys that they they thought were going to be key contributors this year and obviously they're going to be but i think they looked at that position group specifically and said we have to improve here if we want to play the style of defense that, that we want to play here that they brought over from cincinnati and then just to follow up on that get into the recruiting side of it do you feel like maybe the Max, the the Matries are kind of the stopgap until the, I don't want to call, say their real Calvary comes, but their first wave of Lucas and Agard and those guys get into the door. Yeah, I mean, truly guys that, that you know, especially in this 2024 class, guys that they have went out there and evaluated. You know, obviously they inherited some guys in, in the, the 2023 class. Um, you know, they were able to add – you know, guys at the end with Amari Snowden being, you know, the, the top guy there. But, you know, truly in this 2024 class, you know, they had their guys in place in terms of coaches. They were able to do their evaluations. And, I, you know, I think it's a positive thing for if you're a Wisconsin fan to say, you know, that they'll probably sign their highest rated cornerback class. You know, with a guy like Jay Harper is a high three star. Uh, Emilio Agard, who we have as a four star at Rivals and Xavier Lucas in the same boat as a four star. Uh, you know, you, you like Agar as a kid who probably plays day one. You know, I'm not saying he's going to come in and start, but I think he's in your rotation day one. Lucas, you love the size there, six foot two, 180 pounds, versatile enough to probably play a little bit of safety for you. You know, and then Jay Harper's a guy probably doesn't get talked up 
about enough. And I, I, you know, playing at a real good competition in Alabama, I think he's a guy that brings a unique skill set as well. You know, maybe plays boundary, maybe can bounce over in the slot a little bit. I think he's versatile. And I, you know, I like that group quite a bit in this 2024 class. Let me give you one more question with the current team. Uh, Braylon Allen, the, it's it's kind of fascinating to me. Didn't get a lot of touch or carries at least. Got more touches than carries. But there's there's a, a interesting question of do you need to feed Braylon more? But if so, how long do you stick with somebody who isn't being overly productive in the running game while you fall behind? It's a great question. Uh, that's, that's one I don't. I don't make enough money to answer that one. That's why Luke Fickle makes makes all that money. And, you know, you go into this year and you, you go into probably each week and say, you know, Braylon Allen's our top offensive threat. Um, and you, you try to find ways to get him the ball. Obviously, he's leading the team in receptions right now, which I didn't uh, pencil in after after two weeks of football. Uh, but, you know, against Washington State, you get down, right? I mean, in a significant hole. So maybe that changes your game plan a little bit. You can't run the ball maybe as much as you want to with, with Braylon Allen. So you, you try to find different ways to get him the football. So I don't know. You know, I, I think Georgia Southern provides kind of a, a nice get right opportunity, you know, maybe get Braylon Allen back on, back on track there. But, you know, after week two went, it, it kind of opens the question of, you know, how great of a fit is Braylon Allen in this specific offense? And, I, you know, obviously you're going to make a guy like Braylon Allen work no matter what. I'm not saying that, that, you know, he's not a fit and he's not going to be successful. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying, you know, this is a this is a different scheme for him, and they're trying to find different ways to get him in the ball in, in terms of what their offense and how that works. And, you know, there's there seems to be some kinks right now in the, in the road to uh, to getting Braylon Allen going. Uh, I want to ping you on Keontas Lewis, who literally today, uh, right before we are recording this, entered the portal. Um, initial thoughts on Keontas Lewis into the portal? Well, when your family members start – tweeting and people start getting some traction on it. That's usually the first, that's usually the first step. Uh, so, you know, when that, that, you know, I didn't know it was coming, you know, I wasn't planning on it today, but when you kind of look back at how the, the week has went and, you know, with the, him not playing against Washington state, uh, you know, the writing was kind of on the, the, the wall or on Twitter, I guess, uh, as, as far as what his future might, you know, hold. So you know, he's going to enter the portal and, you know, Wisconsin is, is down a receiver now. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it's as much about Keontas Lewis as it was about, you know, do we want to give more reps to Keontas Lewis or, or Chimray DK? And Chimray DK is going to win that battle each and every day. So, you know, they talked about having six game ready receivers at the start of the season. You know, I, they, they probably have five and, you know, they, they've been working with those five through the first two weeks. You know, could Lewis have emerged later in the year? It, maybe. But, you know, I think they like their five and I think it's a very good five you know, that have seen the field so far through, through two weeks there. Let me, let me one more question on the receivers. And this is from uh, Justin. He, he asks, do you think the receiver room was as talented as we felt in the off season or did we maybe overrate it a little bit? I'm still pretty high in that room. Again, you know, you have legit talent there and, and guys who have proven it at, at the college level. Um, you know, maybe not so much CJ Williams, but like, you know, the upside is there. I don't, I know he didn't have a great game against Washington state a couple balls that you know he would have liked to have probably brought in but like you know Bryce Green is legit I, th I think you're, you're going to see that this season Chimray DK is a legit receiver there uh, you know Will Pauling I don't know that you can argue that that he's not a legit slot receiver maybe one of the better ones in the in the Big Ten so I do think that's a position group that that was written about and talked about quite a bit in the fall and I, I think they deserve that and I think you will see that group you know, perform well kind of week in and week out as the season goes on here. And one last question with this, is this just something Badger fans need to get used to, right? When you stockpile talent at receiver, uh, at quarterback, I, I, I mean, I think it's kind of obvious to say one of the quarterbacks is probably eventually going to transfer out. Mm -hmm. um, is this just the new, this is the new norm for Wisconsin in some of these positions it feels like? Yeah. You know, like you said, Ryan, specifically quarterback. I mean, this is how, this is how the, the adults work in, in college football. You, you bring in as much talent as you possibly can, and then guys will transfer out. Uh, you know, and I don't want to say that anyone from this position group of quarterbacks will transfer or is going to transfer because I, I have no idea. But the way that college football works, only one guy can play, right? And they're, they're kind of log jammed at, at that second year of, of quarterbacks. And, um, you know, obviously Tanner's Mordecai's the guy right now, and you'll seemingly go into spring camp next year with with an open competition um but you know like i said this 
the, the better programs in the country, bring in as much talent as you possibly can get, specifically at quarterback, and then, you know, the, the room kind of figures itself out. Guys transfer, and they, they find a different home to play. Yeah, that's well said. We're going to take a quick break, come back, talk about do we need to stay aboard the USS Con Knipple, or is it time to get life rafts in that recruitment? We're going to talk about that next with John. Um, but first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn Jobs is – America's number one professional network um, networking tool in, in a world where every hire is a big deal. Um, and John can attest to this. He, he does hiring and he, he brings people into his team. You know, every new hire, every new hire feels like a high stakes wager. And you have to be 100% certain you're bringing the right people into your team to develop your championship roster. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people faster and for free. It's something I've used professionally. Simple tools, screening questions, uh, make it easy to focus on the candidates with the right skills and the right experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview, who you'd like to hire. LinkedInJobs.com helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Do want to say thank you to every single person tuning in. It's you guys are incredible as we continue to just kind of build the Badger community up in a lot of ways. And one of the goals of that is always to bring smarter people than me on the show. That's again where John comes in. Uh, John, one of the questions I had here was Con Knippel basketball recruit. Obviously, everybody knows the name, and specifically the question was worded. I think I said it before our break. Um, do we need to get off the USS Con Knippel and get a lifeboat, or are we still riding that recruitment? Well, Wisconsin, I think, is still very much in, in that recruitment. Obviously, they they had him on campus for, for an official visit just recently, and you know, with, Wisconsin's been there from the very start. Uh, you know, Virginia's in the mix, Duke's in the mix, a lot of other schools, Alabama. Um, and you know, Ryan, I told you this before we got started. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of guys who I cover in recruiting where I have a good idea where they're going to go, and Con Knipple is not one of those guys. Um, I, if I had to guess today, I, I'd probably say Virginia, but that's not having inside information. Um, you know, that the family has kept that recruitment very, very close to the vest. And, you know, they've kind of been that way from, from day one. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I would certainly expect a decision before his, his senior season kind of gets started here. So, you know, in the next couple of weeks, uh, but again, he has not come out with a list of leaders and he has not come out with a list of, you know, dates when he's going to take official visits and he has not come out with a, a timeline for a decision yet. So uh, we shall see, you know, you, you kind of, you know, tap into some sources here and there and get what you can. But I mean, that is, again, like I said, a recruitment that has been very close to the vest and, and something that's been kept within his family. And we'll have to see where he, where he winds up in the next uh, couple of weeks here. So. And I know football recruiting and basketball recruiting are not the same thing for a lot of reasons. Um, but should Badger fans be frustrated if, Knipple leaves the state given given just given the I don't want to say he's he seems like a perfect fit for a Badgers offense and he's well, he is uh, yeah right exactly he, abs he absolutely uh, is yeah it, like is that just something Badger fans should be frustrated about if, if they're not able to land him yeah I mean it, look in in Greg Gard is is has recruited well recently right I mean you you kind of felt like he had some momentum going with Daniel Freetag and um, you fall a little bit short for Jackson McAndrew, probably his second choice. You know, obviously he winds up at Creighton. And, you know, it's it's tough then if Wisconsin for a five-star kid is the second option for him as well. You know, that that, that obviously does you no know, good. So, yeah, I, I, I think there's reason for frustration. Um, but like you talked about too, I mean, in-state recruiting is different in football and, you know, in comparison to basketball. Um, but again, it's it's – I think if you are a fan, it's always tough when you see in-state talent leave the state regardless of what sport uh, you know you're passionate about well and let's flip it back to football because there was a couple of questions about in-state recruiting in the 25 class for wisconsin specifically targets that they're looking at i want to frame it i think people know the the big names um is there is there a player in state that has maybe gone a little underlooked or underrated um yeah you know, cooper catalano is a kid that that i really like and i've, I've liked for a while and you know, I was at his game on last Friday, and you know Germantown's having a rough year. Their quarterbacks hurt, a lot of guys in the offensive line are hurt, and Catalano was actually hurt the prior week, and he's coming back from I think just a minor leg injury. So, um, you know, I, I I really like him, and you know, like you talked about Ryan, there you know guys like Owen Strebig get get talked about quite a bit, and and rightfully so, right? I mean, he's he's one of the better players in the country, but you know Catalano's a guy who I think was fits Wisconsin very well, and 
you know, they have made it known to him, you know, going back to the summer that, you know, he's likely their top you know, inside linebacker target in this 2025 class. So, you know, he's, he will be a four-year starter next year at Germantown. Um, he has a chance to break the state tackling record, total tackles and in a career, which is, you know, an awfully impressive market somewhere, I think in the 470 mark, you know, ish, 470 tackles ish, whatever that, that state record is. I think he has a chance to break it if he does stay healthy. So, um, just a really, really good football player. You know, he's got a little Chris Borland in him. Although when I saw him on Friday, he, he's a little bit taller, a little thinned out a little bit more. So not as stocky as he was the previous year. So, um, you know, he's a kid I like quite a bit too. Uh, went up and saw Michael Rayski to start the year, uh, you know, six foot eight, 300 pounds. And, you know, he, he carries six foot eight, 300 pounds, just about as well as I've ever seen a kid at that high school level. You know, there's, there's a handful of kids that, that I've seen over the last, you know, 15 or 20 years in person that really make you do a double take. Uh, he's, he's one of them, you know, JC Latham's another kid where the first okay. time I saw him, I, I said, you know, went back and forth. Wow. I, you know, I cannot believe, you know, what this kid looks like at 15, 16 years old. And, and Rayski is one of those kids. So, you know, I, I, two kids with Rayski and Catalano, I, I have future casts in for Wisconsin. So, um, you know, I think there's a ways to go in each of their recruitment, but I do think they end up uh, staying inside the state. So, I think there goes there, they if things kind of move the direction I envision it going, I, I think Wisconsin fans will be pretty happy about them down the road. A couple quick questions about some of the names you threw out there. I mean, Owen Strybig, I think for the Badger fans that really follow recruiting, he's he's been linked more or less to smoke out there to Notre Dame for such a long time. Mm -hmm. I feel like Badger fans have mostly written that off. I, I maybe I'm speaking for myself and maybe I shouldn't speak for others, but is is that does that seem like an accurate characterization of that recruitment? Yeah, in, in terms of Notre Dame, he, he's a kid I have a future cast in for uh, to land at Notre Dame. But again, not someone who has come out with a list of, you know, here's my top group. Not someone who comes out with a list of, um, you know, this is, you know, when I'll make my decision or narrow things down, anything like that. But, um, you know, I got it on some pretty good authority from a few different people that Notre Dame is is a school that he likes quite a bit. And, you know, his visit schedule will, will indicate that as well. He's been to, to, to South Bend, at, you know, a, a lot of times. But again, he was at Wisconsin week one, you know, for, for the opener against Buffalo, too. So that's that's not something I'm saying is, is a done deal. You know, he can always make that short trip up to Wisconsin. And they have absolutely prioritized him, right? I mean, they have went out after him, you know, with everything they've had. You know, Catholic Memorial is one of the first stops that Luke Fickle made. And, you know, just as much as it was for them to do homework on, on the two kids that, that wound up at Penn state very much. So they knew Owen Strebick was there too. And they, they were you know making sure that they knew that, uh, you know, Wisconsin was, was still very much, you know, in pursuit of him and, you know, probably, you know, ar arguably their top target in the 2025 class, regardless of position. Over under like nine and a half Twitter mentions about the wall around Wisconsin that you're going to get if he leaves for Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, probably quite a few. And I, <laughs> I tweeted out a Catholic Memorial score like three weeks ago and it got all sorts of that kind of traction only because they were playing Marquette and Marquette was, was beating them 35 to nothing. And it had nothing to do with recruiting. It was only because I was shocked by the score, but that's, that's the way the, the direction the tweet went in the mention. So absolutely, more, I'll take the over, I'll take the over on that yeah, one. I think it's probably a safe one. I should have set that higher. One more on uh rescue and, and striving. How big of a gap is it between the two? Because I think nationally the per, the perspective is that Owen is is a, a, a higher caliber of offensive lineman. When you see Resky run and move, and to your point, he's carrying that weight incredibly well. Similar frames. Mm -hmm. Is there a big gap between the two in your mind? You know, I, I don't think so. Um, you know, again, Resky's a kid that you know Notre Dame's all over too, right? And I think Notre Dame recruits offensive line just as well as any school in the country. So that you know you, that evaluation that they've done on those two, you know. Obviously, they're both big time targets for for both Wisconsin and Notre Dame. So, um, you know, I, I don't think that there's a huge gap there, right? You know, different kind of body types. Uh, Strebig is is more filled out. Um, you know, both athletic kids, but you know, you see Rayski in person, and he's lean. I mean, really lean for a kid who's who's a legit 300 pounds, which makes you think you know he could be you know six eight and playing that 325, 330 range and be completely fine when, once he gets to college. So, um, again, like, like, yes, I, I don't think the gap is huge there, but you know, if you give me one in a class, I, I'd probably take Strawberry, but it's not by a huge margin. Okay. No, that's good stuff. Um, 
A couple more defensive players I want to talk about, but first, one more quick break for our friends of the show. Coming back with John, uh, talking recruiting, Badgers football, Con Knipple. Great show so far. Uh, one quick break for our friends of the show over at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book, and it's it's the best time that you can sign up for FanDuel right now. Uh, football season just getting started. I've mentioned Brock Purdy, my Niners. I have money on them to win the Super Bowl once again. Braves, my baseball team, uh, just won the NLE sixth time in a row. So it was a great time for me to bet. Uh, basketball starting up. I still have future bets on Wisconsin on FanDuel. And I won't give up on those yet. So FanDuel is the number one place to go do this. Plus, right now, new customers get $5, bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. All right, let's bring John back on. Uh, and again, with you know the, the really good guests, we always run out of time before we run out of questions. But I definitely want to give you an opportunity as well, John, to talk about everything you're doing over at Rivals, Badger Blitz. Uh, where can people find that work if they're not aware? Yeah, badgerblitz.com. Um, got a good crew of uh, of young bucks now, Seamus Rohr, Donnie Slusher, um, handling the football beat. And, um, you know, a lot of experience with Ben Wargle on, on the basketball beat, and I try to do as much recruiting as I can. Uh, so, yeah, you can find our work at Badger Blitz, um, you know, and give us a chance to, to earn your business there. For sure. Um, let's continue talking recruiting. We got this question from let me see uh i didn't actually get the name but the question was which defensive recruit in the 24 class are you most excited about it's a good question you know we talked about the cornerbacks um you know i i kind of always like kids or you know that that the upside is real high and i i think you know you have two on the defensive side of the ball specifically and in thomas heiberger and um rafael dunn and dunn is intriguing because you know he's what six three six four 200 pounds and they, they want him to play that dollar. Um, and I think that's a, obviously a very interesting position in, in Mike Trestle's defense. And it's just going to be interesting to see how his body develops, right? I mean, he could very well be, you know, when I talked to his high school coach, you know, he could be 6'4 and 240 pounds at Wisconsin, or he could be 6'4 and 210 pounds and, and flying around the field, you know, similar to what Hunter Wooler does. And um, so, you know, he's an intriguing guy. And Heiberger, you know, if, if I can assure you, that the Wisconsin coaches love Thomas Heiberger and the potential that he has and, you know, the athletic ability and the upside that he brings to the table. Um, Lafayette, I think is very much of get to the quarterback pass rush guy. Heiberger can do a lot of different things in that defense. I think that, you know, that versatility is something that they loved the frame, the athletic ability, uh, you know, put weight on him and, and maybe put him closer to the line or, or let him play free at, you know, six foot four and 230 pounds. So I think that they love that versatility. And that's, you know, that tandem at outside linebacker, I think is very good. Like I talked about, Lafayette is, like I said, it, you go get the quarterback every single down uh, it, while you're out there and Hyper can, can do a lot of the other things there. So, um, you know, the, the two guys I'd probably be the most excited to see once they get to Wisconsin, um, just, just in terms of their their ceiling and, you know, ability, uh, Heiberger and, and Raphael Dunn. Yeah, those are good ones. I, I think Lafayette is high on that list for me. Just it, it feels like such a need right now for the Badgers to get a guy who can maybe get a little more pressure off the edge. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, a guy who's going to enroll early. Um, it it's unfair to to compare anyone to Nick Herbig, but obviously the 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 connection there draws that comparison. And you know, it, getting there early, you know, it, it's huge for for the development. And like you talked about, Ryan. I mean. This, this team and this roster needs pass rush, and I think Lafayette fills that hole. How quickly can he fill it? I mean, that will be the question. Uh, here's a question from Playmaker, um, and a few people asked this. Do you see any potential flips, um, or do you see the staff trying to flip anybody for this 24 class still? Yeah, absolutely. Always. There's, it's always flip season, and flip season gets even hotter in the fall. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't – I'm not really able to say specific guys at this point. Um, you know, you kind of get into getting in the weeds there with kids who are committed to a, to a certain school and stuff like that. But, you know, always, I mean, this, you never just close your recruiting notebook and say, all right, we're done. Uh, let's work on the next class. You're, you're always looking for those options. And you know, a lot of times it, 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 it's in the form of a flip, right? You know, you know, coaching change or a kid who's committed to a, a you know, non-power five school that wants to bump up. Um, you know, it always happens. And look, 
schools are going to come and try to flip kids from Wisconsin as well. So, I mean, that, that is something that you know, will absolutely be happening in the fall and it'll be interesting to track, you know, who pops up on campus in the next couple of weeks here and, um, you know, what the, what the situation is with, with this 2024 class. But, yeah, it, it's nonstop. That'll, that'll never stop. Always flip season. Thoughts really quick on filling up the staff so quickly. There was, there was a couple of people who wondered if that's a strategy that you like or would it make more sense potentially to leave more spaces open, let's say, for an Ohio State game where you can maybe attack more aggressively in that 24 class? Well, look, they they got guys that they really liked. So, I, you know, the, they're, there's not – you know, I can't speak for the coaching staff, but there's not reaches here, right, where they just said, hey, we got to get guys and we got to fill it up. And then, you know, as I say that, too, you look at the top guys in the country, you know, regardless of where they're going, things are wrapped up by June, right? Like, if, if you don't get your spot and, you know, obviously the elite, elite, elite players, they can, can control their own calendar. But for the rest, like, if you find a home and you you, you go beyond July, you're, you're kind of getting into some some dangerous waters if, if there's some schools that you really like and you don't pull the trigger there. So. Um, you know, in terms of filling, I, look, if Wisconsin wants to make room right now for a guy that wants to commit and they love him, they're going to be able to do that. I mean, they're, they're not saying, in, you know, oh, shucks, we're, we're, out of, we're out of room to anyone right now, right? And if, if it's the right fit and they can get a guy in, they're going to get a guy in and they're going to make sure that, that they have a way to do it. So it's, it's not like, a, you know, put a close sign up at the bar and say, right. yeah, you know, we, we can't see anyone till, till you know, till we open up the next day. They will find room if it's the right fit. I assure you that they are not full. You're never full because there, there's always someone that, that can make you unfull. Re- recruiting's wild, man. It's always flip season and you're never full. And both of those are true statements. <laughs> um, it, this one's from Bob and we'll, we'll bang through these last ones kind of quick, but I, once again, I really appreciate your time and insight. Uh, yeah, man. Take your time. Sense, any sense that recruits get ner- And He said shaky offense performance, but I'm just going to say recruits in general. How how nervous do recruits get when watching a team? And it's not like Wisconsin has fallen on their face. Like Washington State's a fine team. But do fans freak out more or do the recruits freak out more? 100% fans. And that that question comes up all the time, especially after, you know, you bring a bunch of recruits to to a home game and Wisconsin loses. And the the, the reaction from fans is, oh, my God, like these guys saw Wisconsin lose this game. And then as – I spend Sunday connecting with them. Yeah, of course they, they notice that, but they are not fans going in. You know, they are not these diehard fans that, you know, you interact with every, every single day that, that I interact with. It's, it's different from a fan's point of view where you are watching every single snap and you're, you're, you know, up and down throughout the whole season. That's not how a recruit lives, right? I mean, they're going to go to another campus the next week and, they're not crossing teams off because they lost. They're they're looking at the the entire body of the experience there. So again, that 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 question comes up a lot. It's a good question, right? I mean, hey, you know what happens if if you know we have this big weekend here and, and Wisconsin loses, they get blown out. Look, the recruiting staff takes them away from the stadium then and shows them other things that, right. that you know they're not going to make them stand out in the rain and watch Wisconsin get pounded by Illinois. I assure you that they're going to show them some other things on campus while that's going on and, and make the make the experience there a little bit different. So yeah, it, you know, it's, it's not something that recruits go to bed and think at night about, you know, this team won or this team's offense did this. Um, but at the same time, things are rolling. You got a couple running backs there. You say, Hey, look, look what we're doing. You know, look at look how, look how we're running the ball. So it, it's more so a fan thing and it's not a recruit thing. Well, let's be honest, too. You mentioned uh, they won't keep the recruit there watching Wisconsin get pounded in the rain by Illinois. Fans don't stay there and watch that either, right? Like, fans go find something else to do. Um, A couple more quick questions here. A lot of questions about defense line recruiting, Uh, specifically 25, the the 25 class. Are you seeing positive indications there? I know it's so early, man, but people are nervous about defense line recruiting. It it is early, right? And, um, you know, I, th- I think that Greg Scruggs' his name has been brought up on the recruiting front, and you know w- what's he able to do. You know, he's still a guy that you know I, I absolutely believe in. If you you listen to him talk, and I think once he gets rolling, you know he'll 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 get things going on on the defensive line there. And I think people forget that like you know he came in and he closed pretty well in the in the 2023 class with with a kid I think is going to have a pretty good future at Wisconsin, Jamil Howard. So um, 
you know, and you look at 2024, Hank Weber, you know, maybe a guy that doesn't move the needle a ton, but I think he's going to come in and be a solid player. Dylan Johnson is a kid they wanted early, right? And, you know, dating back to the spring, they made him a top priority. Um, yeah, I thought he was headed there, to be real honest with you. You know, he came up, and then a couple of days later, he brought the family back up. I thought he was going to actually pop in the spring, and he obviously ends up at, at Northwestern, now back with Wisconsin. You know, they're they're still looking at some options in this 2024 class to, to fill maybe a spot on the defensive line. But, you know, if, if, if you look at the current roster, that, that group has to be upgraded, right? I mean, moving forward and, and doing the things that you want to do in that defense, you know, you have to upgrade that group. That being said, you know, defensive line is probably the, you know, specifically tackle. That's, that's probably the most difficult position to recruit in college football. Um, you know, schools like Georgia and Alabama, they, they get the top kids and that, that usually doesn't change Ohio state's in the same, you know, the same conversation there. So that, that is a difficult position to recruit in, in six foot three, 300 pound, super athletic kids. I mean, there's just not a whole lot of them that are, that are walking around in high schools right now. What's the last great pass rushing high school defensive end that, that you can think of in Wisconsin that came was coming out of high school? Uh, like from inside the state? Yeah, just because that I think that's part of it too, right? It, Wisconsin just does not churn out many of those pass rushing defensive ends. Yeah, like, you know, TJ Watt, but, you know, he was more, you know, he played quarterback. And I think if I remember back correctly, you know, he lined up more in the middle of the defense just because he's, you know, the best guy and you want to put him in the middle so teams can't go to the, to the opposite side on you. Um, but, you know, yeah, that's a good question. I have to kind of go back and look. You know, the, Dominic Sazowskis, you know, he was an inside linebacker, but I mean, he could absolutely, you know, get to the quarterback. Uh, you know, Cooper Catalano can get to the cornerback pretty well, but you know, he's, you know, he's an inside linebacker. Here. You know, in terms of those true edge guys, you know, there's there's not a lot that that that, that you know come up off the top of my head. I'm sure we'll go back and some we'll mention someone real obvious that, right. that I forgot about. You know, as soon as, but you know, not not a ton, right? Well, and that wasn't meant to put you on the spot. I was actually trying to think earlier today, and I was coming up with blanks, and it's just – Yeah, well, even a guy like, you know, like Zach Vaughn, right? Like Zach Vaughn was a quarterback, and, you know, he wound up at, at outside linebacker. Obviously had a great career there for Wisconsin. Um, you know, he kid from inside the state, mm-hmm. he played at Brown Deer. So, you know, yeah, those – again, you, know, you don't see a lot of six foot four, 230-pound kids in the high school level inside the state that are those true edge guys – you know, like a like a Lafayette is right in the in this class. Uh, one more question here. This was um, just a thought on. Oh no, I lost it. I'm terrible. Oh, here we go. Uh, player from the the twenty the the twenty four class that you've seen so far in high school this year that you've seen the start of their season. What player has elevated themselves the most in your eyes from where they were last year to where they are this year? Or a couple of there's a couple that stand out to you. Uh, 2024. Um, that's a, that's a good question there. You know, I have still, I haven't done my like Illinois swing yet. Right. So I've, I've done, you know, a handful of kids from inside the state, some from the 2025. Um, you know, so I, you know, I definitely want to get down and see Darian Dupree. And, uh, you know, I was able to connect with Clint Cosgrove who saw him, I believe in week one and, you know, Clint loves the kid, but Clint's like, you know, this kid took a jump from junior to senior year and he is absolutely electric and you know there's a reason why Alabama's coming with an offer for him so you know in terms of you know kids that, that get you excited probably in that offensive side and, and in this class just in general I, I would say Daring Dupree and you know a kid that that's still on my list to go see uh you know at some point this fall but like I said you know Clint was able to get down there and see him and anything that Clint says is kind of gold in my ears you know he, that he knows how to he knows how to evaluate and he knows how to scout and he knows how to do all that. And he was on daring Dupree right away. You know, he, he reached out to me right away and said, I think Dupree would be a great fit at Wisconsin. You know, this was before they even offered him. So, um, you know, it, it'll be, it'll be a big win for Wisconsin. If they're able to sign him. Right. Cause you know, Alabama's in there with him. And, you know, I, I think it's a, certainly a possibility he pops up on campus there. And, you know, that's not the only school I would imagine that that's, that's trying to, uh, to flip him this fall too. Really quick on Dupree, and I know I keep saying last question, and then I keep thinking of more, uh, but this is the last one, I swear. Uh, quick on Dupree, do you get a sense of how serious Alabama is? I, I know some schools throw offers out, and I don't know if Alabama's in that category. Do you, what's the feel there for Alabama? Yeah, that's a good question. And, uh, 
you know, it's le- it's legit, right? Like the people that I've talked to, because that's what you want to find out, right? Is it, is it legit? Or are they just saying, hey, that, let's see what happens here. Um, you know, it'll get real if he pops up there, right? This fall. I mean, that'll, I mean, that, that seems like an obvious answer, right? But like, if he's there and he, and he his boots on campus down, down in Alabama, I mean, then I think it gets real, right? And then if you're a Wisconsin fan, you got to maybe anticipate the worst potentially happening. Right. You know, right now it's, it's something that he's kind of went out and said again, you know, Clint connected with them after that game and, you know, I'm locked into Wisconsin. It's not something that I'm, you know, all that concerned about, but again, like I have seen this, this happen for, for a lot of years and it's, it will not be over with him. And for a lot of kids at, at that level, you know, of, of talent, until he signs with Wisconsin in December. So I think it's going to be something that Wisconsin fans are going to have to worry about probably until December 20th. I think that's the date for the early date this year. Uh, John McNamara over at uh, Badger Blitz Rivals. John, thank you so much for stopping in as always. And uh, I've run out of time before I run out of questions with you, but we appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, man. Uh, For everyone listening, thank you so much. Uh, We'll be back tomorrow. Talk tomorrow on Wisconsin. We'll talk Georgia Southern tomorrow. And with that, we'll wrap it up. Thank you again.